Okay, so it's several days later. I've had work to do. Anders has been visiting different things. And now we're going to crush and pan the samples. So, first thing, Anders, as you will notice, the rock can be a lot different. See, this is... Why, what, what do you... You can find gold in white rock, you can find gold in the brown rock. Yes. Every, every mine is different. The world has many, many different things going on at once. And so, for example, you can weld or machine steel many different ways. Yes. In the end, it's all machine steel. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah. now I understand. Okay. So, Chemically, there's a lot of different things that can happen along with depositing gold. Okay, okay. so yeah. you can yeah. have uh, a geothermal situation, you can have a plaster. There's a lot of different things that can deposit gold, and depending upon what else is present, yeah. a lot of other things can happen at the same time. Okay. Now, every mine is going to have different rock. Mm -hmm. in, in hard mm -hmm. rock, you have what's known as the host rock, which is whatever was there before the gold mm -hmm. got deposited. Mm -hmm. And then something causes gold to get deposited. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be the mineralized rock. Yes. Okay. Now in this case, this looks very highly mineralized in terms of non-gold minerals. Okay. Uh, yes. See how dark and black yes, that is? Dark, dark brown. This yes. is relatively unmineralized. Quartz. It looks pretty clean. I'm not real excited about this, but I have seen high-grade quartz, quartz right. that looks not a whole lot different than this. Okay. And it was running 40 ounces to the ton. Oh yes. <laughs> so that'd be uh, 120 grams to the ton. Oh yeah. You're looking at. Well, let's see. Oh. Fifty or a hundred thousand dollars a ton. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. So right now we don't know where the gold is. Yes. We can see what they were following with the tunnels. Okay. So we assume that whatever was along that tunnel yes. was what they were interested in. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is also this mine was also mining tungsten. Uh huh. Tungsten. Huh? Yes. Now. That's entirely possible to have been a bit of a legal manipulation in terms of in World War II, if your mine only mined gold, you couldn't mine it. Okay. They needed the manpower to mine other minerals like steel and you know iron and lead, yeah. copper, and tungsten, because tungsten yes. carbide okay. is the tip of an armor-piercing projectile. Ah, yes, of course. So tungsten was very important. So yeah. a lot of people would sit there and say, well, I've got tungsten in my mine, yeah. and I've got gold. Yes. So I'm going to say it's a tungsten mine, and I will produce tungsten, tungsten. but what makes me the money is actually the gold. The gold. Okay. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it really was a tungsten mine, mm -hmm. or if that was just for legal purposes. Okay. <laughs> but there may be significant tungsten in it too. So, we take these samples, they're different rock types yes. in different places. Now we're gonna crush them up and pan them. And what we wanna be able to do after we pan them, and, and if those results look good after we send them to the laboratory, yes. Yes. is to say, is there anything we can see with our eyes that tells us whether it's probably got gold in it or not? Okay. So the first thing you do is in each sample, you take out a rock yes. that looks like that sample. It yes. looks you know, sure. just like an average rock uh, from average. that sample. Okay. Yes. You set it aside, uh. then you crush the rest of the sample. Crush the rest of them, okay. And then you test that. Mm -hmm. And that and uh, you say for in a plastic bag and writing what is Well, it? we'll just put it right in the same plastic bag, because you can always just take it out. <laughs> Huh? Blow it off, wash it off, or whatever, and look at huh? it. But that way, it gets—it's in the same bag, so you know that they're the same sample. Okay. Anyhow, yeah. so down here, these were the samples from the upper level we took. These two samples, I believe, are going to be the lowest grade. 
These, I believe, are going to be the highest grade. Yeah. And to keep high grade from contaminating low grade, we'll do the low grade first. Yeah, you must uh, um, take them away so you know that uh, they don't get uh, contaminated. Uh, Contamination. Yes. Yes. We'll do this one. And then we'll do that one, and then this one, and this one, and this one. Okay. And that way, any contamination will tend to be a little bit of low grade in a high grade sample, and that's not going to make any difference. Okay. But a little bit of high grade in a low grade sample, that's, uh, that can make it look a lot different than it really is. Another cup of tea. Okay. So let's get started. Yes. Now, to minimize cross contamination, I just did something that looked like a high grade sample. I'm moving to another level. Then I'll use it as a uh, fill for the uh, <laughs> driveway. Now it's it's a good idea, even when you're experienced like me, to yeah. make sure that it's liquid first, because different rock behaves differently. So you always see me when I start shaking it, put my fingers yeah. in and make sure it's liquid. Uh -huh. yeah. best gold sample that I've seen so far from this mine, but I'm still only going to call it about a 0.05 ounce. That's one thing you learn as you, as you practice this, is don't make any movements that you don't consciously decide <laughs> to make, because that's, and all of a sudden everything's moved around on you. Okay, at that point it's all concentrated, yes, yes. now just... Put Tap more it. water in the put okay. more water in the pan like that, that side. Right. Okay, then start your tap. Always grab in the same that place, place. Tap in the same place. Okay. Wait a second. Well, Anders, I hope you had a good adventure yes. and 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 had some fun doing some new things. As it's a, it's a really heavy experience, you know, because you take us out in the real. Uh, field, you know, not uh, something you see on the television. You must be careful yourself. But I hope someone can contact you and uh, ask, you, can I follow with you out in the in the mining and see how it functions. I, I always have people who are saying, hey, can I can I help you out on something in exchange for learning or whatever. I mean, I like teaching people. I'm I I don't have a lot of money, so I have to be careful. Uh, and, and make sure that things pay as I go, but I'm especially once I get an actual mine that's making money, then I should be able to just oh sure come on by and, and help us out and and like that it, it should be easy. I don't know if you noticed on that hill when we found the rattlesnake. Did you see how close my foot was to it before the walking stick? Uh, yes, it, it was really really <laughs> close. Uh, do you remember what I told you? What? It's better he bite an American than a Swede. We're only nine mil million people in the world. So it's, you have much more people in the U.S., you know. So yeah, it's we're much, we're uh, more expendable. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, well, I don't want to say, but to say uh, to No, it was, that's, but that's exactly what it was. Poking the bushes. Yes. And, I mean, it was like right there. <laughs> poke. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and because, let's say, they're not as aggressive out here as some places, and it was a small snake in a bush. It's, yeah, I it's think hard. it was large, you know. <laughs> oh, no. and it's in my hard, eyes. It's hard for them to strike through a bush. Okay. So they're, they're not that anxious to strike at you. And also with the boots and the big baggy pants, yeah. even if he did strike, there's a good chance he never would have got to my skin. Okay. And even if they penetrate the skin, there's uh, a 25% chance they don't inject any venom. Okay. So it's it's not anywhere near being you know certain death or anything like uh, that. Okay. Usually, even if they do give you venom, you're just going to get sick. But yeah. you do want to be careful. And I was I'm glad we ran into one so you could see one in the wild. <laughs> oh, yes. <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> only wise, but I heard about inside 
tools so you can find rattlesnake too. Oh, inside so, the mines, exactly. Yeah. It, it depends on inside the season. The, mines, of course, I mean. the weather is yeah. kind of nice right now. If yes. it was really hot or really cold, yes. usually, usually in the winter they yeah. go into the mines yes. because it's warmer in there. Okay, okay. And they'll just kind of hibernate there. Yeah. Okay. But during the summertime, they're kind of out hunting. Okay. okay. But it, as I say, it, it was fun. Uh, we got to test the yes. minor bagel on uh, some. I really love it. I, this is a memory for my life, you know. <laughs> I'm never going to forget. We're, we're going to meet so every year. Every year we're going to meet. My well, son yeah, lives we, here. He lives in, and married with a girl from Tucson. Yeah. So we come here every year. But this is the first yeah. time I've been with the kid. And it's a very nice person. A really good person. <laughs> well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so. We had us a good weekend. Yes. And uh, I got to get to work later today. So we're going to have to close this up and I'll get it edited out as soon as I can. So, what do we say? Happy, happy prospecting, prospecting and yeah. keep it safe, safe out there. Yeah, happy prospecting and keep it safe. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Take care.